Hi there. I've had another amazing epiphany regarding my passion for the Fibonacci sequence. It seems to be endless. The more I research, I keep coming back to these, this code, this clock of Fibonacci numbers. And, and within this clock of Fibonacci numbers, I've, is what's been revealed is the 216 code. I'm going to show you where this number, so as you know, 216 is a cubic number. It's 6 times 6 times 6. That's all about perfect fitting together of data. So, um, so the another name for what I'm going to show you is called a Fibonacci clock, and it's called a Pisano function. So Pisa, the reason why it's called Pisano is that Leonardo da Vinci is also known, not, not, sorry, not Leonardo da Vinci, Leonardo of Fibonacci was also known as um, Leonardo Fibonacci de Pisa. So Pisa is where the Leaning Tower of Pisa is. We all know the Leaning Tower. So Fibonacci was around the 12th century and we all know him as being an, a citizen of Pisa. So, so we're calling this Pisano function, which just means it's relating to Fibonacci, right? Now, I'm going to be talking about, to show you this 216 code, it's hidden. So P is for Pisano, but something about the 24, 24 Fibonacci numbers give a length or cycle of 24. So we say P24 equals 24. It's, it's like we're learning another language. But for, and what I've done is I've drawn it up here, um, and I'm going to explain all the magical properties of the number 216. But you can see here, I'm, I'm writing the Fibonacci numbers 1. We start from 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21. But you notice I don't have 34, because if we're talking about P24, we, we're, we can only use the Fibonacci numbers up to 24. So when I get to the, the next number here, 34, I take away 10. I, I keep... I, from 34, I take away 24, and I'm left with 10. So I'm, I'm going to explain that on the board. But the, to appreciate what's going on here, what I would like to do is I'd like to show you um, what, what, why P24 is itself. That self-similarity is so critical that I'm going to show you an example where it doesn't work. So this example here is called Pisano 10 equals 60. So see how they're different numbers? And what I'm showing you here is so rare, and it all adds up, it's all about the 216. So um, this one I've shown you before is that if we take the Fibonacci numbers only up to 10, so we go 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8. So, so here we should have 13, but because we're looking at Pisano 10, I can't use a number more than 10. So this should be 5 and 8 is 13, take away 10 leaves a 3. Then the next Fibonacci number is 21 because 8 and 13 is 21. Take away 10 and another 10, we're left with a 1. Now this Pisano 10 means that cycle, the length of that cycle where it repeats again and again is 60. And this has to do with the Tesla cycle, 60 hertz. So what I've done here is I've shaded all the length. So as you go from 1 to 0 to 9, these lengths here, so if this here is a 7, I've gone 7. This here is a 7, this, this distance here is a 4, this distance is a 5 and a 6. So I'm just showing you pretty much the volumes of the Fibonacci numbers. So I wanted to show you that this, this is so special because where does a Fibonacci clock mathematics, we call it modulus maths or clock mathematics, repeat itself? So something happens at 24. Now, just so you know what we're talking about with the clock mathematics, if this was your normal clock of 24 hours, you all know that if the time was um, 14, 16, so let's write that down. So if the time was 14, 16, we know it's going to be PM, but what time PM is it? We have to take away 12. So if you took away 12 from that, the time is 2, 16, and we call it PM. So we all, that's called clock mathematics modulus math. So we're not doing anything different than what you know. So we're going to, with, with the clock mathematics, I've divided this into 24 because I only want to look at 20, the, the Fibonacci numbers that are under 24. So I start with 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21. They're all under 24 because we're looking at P24. But what happens is the next number is 13 plus 21 is 34. We know that's a Fibonacci number, but we have to take away 
that 24, just like with time, we took away 12 hours. Here, we've got to keep taking away 24 or multiples of 24 to get a remainder under 24. So 24 less that 34 is 10. So that's why I write a 10 here. The next number is 21 and 34 is 55. So why did I put a 7 here? Because from 55, I have to keep subtracting multiples of 24. So that would be double 24 is 48. So 48 from the 55 is 7. So that's why I put a 7 here. So rather than adding all the big Fibonacci numbers, if we did all the Fibonacci numbers, the 24th Fibonacci, the, the 23rd or 24th Fibonacci number is 46,368. But we don't want to keep writing all the Fibonacci numbers. What I can do here is go 10 and 7, add in the two previous numbers. 10 and 7 is 17. 17 and 7 is 24. And you notice that because we're not allowed to have anything more than 24. So 24 take away 24 is a zero. So notice that this zero here is diametrically opposite this zero here. And that's only halfway pattern. And what I get from this dynamic here is that there's some kind of like energy that's flowing through the zero here, through here, and through here. These are like gateways. And I feel that as the energy comes in, something happens in the center here there's some spiral energy so this is a code of great significance because the zeros are lining up and this means that every 12th fibonacci number is going to be a zero every 12th fibonacci number to infinity will all end in a zero so this is actually the number 610 in the fibonacci segment so it keeps going zero and 17 is 17 17 and zero is 17 17 and 17 is 34 less 24 is 10 and it just so that's how i got all these numbers you see now this is the revelation so so these pisano faction uh, these pisano functions have been done up to 3000 long lengths of so numbers like huge research has been done on this so i'm not claiming that i've discovered this fibonacci clock that's really big um research right and credit to all the mathematicians but no one has ever decided to add up all these individual numbers because that to me is critical so my revelation or epiphany is that when i decided to add up all these numbers have a guess what they all added up to not a random number they added up to 216 so we call that sigma so if i was to record the data i would say sigma which is the greek letter like an s s for sum from one from the first to the end of the clock 24 so sigma 1 to 24 equals 216 now the reason why i'm interested in this is that 216 is an anointed number. So what follows now is some information that I've been doing um, that I've extracted from my harmonic stairway. That's a dictionary of numbers that I've put together over the last 40 years, all my notes, and it's about three to 4,000 pages. So as I go through my folder, what, what's important about 216? So here, these will be some the points that you would be of interest here. So we know that three, first of all, 216 is is six cubed so it's a cubic number that means in if there were six little cubelets going along here and up here there's 216 baby cubes or cubelets um here's another cube here if i was to look at this star tetrahedron this is done by my friend asaf um here's a photocopy of it so if you can see that this is a glass a glass um star tetrahedron but what he's done He's said for every face here, he's, he's done a three frequencies. So if that face there had nine little tr equilateral triangles, that means nine times 24, because there's 24 faces. Nine times 24 is 216 little triangles in there. So I just wanted to reference that in this cubic star tetrahedron, which is reminiscent of our eight original cells, that 216 is a code. And also the, in the ancient Hebrew, there was a lot of reference in the Kabbalah that the name, the original name of God was 216 letters. And that's another kind of deep mystery called the um, Shem for Forash. So there's Hebrew, ancient Hebrew knowledge about 216, the name of God. 
Um, I'm interested with the Pythagoras' triangle. So here's th the sum of three cubic numbers, three cubed plus four cubed plus five cubed. If you added them all up, equals six cubed. And I love that. that this is called a mathematical plum of the highest order. It's a real gem. And Bruce Cathy, when he'd done the harmonics of the earth and the ley lines, he noticed that if this is 216 and the, the longer side is 288, that's double 144, the speed of light harmonic. And this is 6 cubed. The hypotenuse, according to Pythagoras' theorem, is 216 squared plus 288 squared equals 360 squared. Now, 360 is the harmonics of the circle, 360 degrees. So this is big. This is a whole universe of information in three-dimensional trigonometry. I showed you the three frequencies, star tetrahedron, when we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. There's a multiplication square here. This multiplication square means w instead of adding the numbers to get the same constant, we, any th three numbers that I multiply, 2 times 6 times 18 is 216. 4 times 6 times 9, that's 9 times 24, is 216. So all the rows and columns all add up to 216. Um, in Cambodia, I have a photocopy... I have a photocopy here of um, these, this architecture in Cambodia. It's called the Bayon Temple. So this amazing temple called the Bayon Temple, why did they build 216 of these giant smiling faces, which pretty much related to Avalokiteshvara, some kind of Buddhist deity? So why would the ancient people build 216 Buddha faces, um, a mystery, and I love, that's what keeps us going is the mystery. So that's the Bayon Temple. Um, just a one more is that the speed of light is known as 186,624 miles per second. So every second, that's the speed of light. So that number, 186,000, is the multiplication of 216 and 864. So... Um, so I'd just like to talk about, just a little bit more about that. So 216 has got to do with the moon's diameter. That's 2,160 miles. And the diameter of the sun is 864,000 miles. So when you take harmonic 216 and 864, the diameters of the moon and the sun, we end up with the speed of light. Um, and if I would, I'd like to conclude to say that... the this P24 equals itself. That means only tw numbers up to Fibonacci numbers up to 24 have the same cycle length as the clock that we're talking about. The next time it happens is at 600 here. So we have a thing here called um, um, P P600 equals 600. What that means is that if we had a clock, so we'll call this P600. So if we had a clock with 600 numbers, right, all the way around, but we only, we weren't allowed to go larger than 600 because the, the Fibonacci number up to here is 610. You can't use that. So only using all the Fibonacci numbers less, the, the, the cycle length where it repeats, like it repeats here at 24, equals 600. So it's, its cyclic repetition is also based on the Fibonacci clock of 600. So... 24 seems to be the, the code that underpins symmetry and repetition on the astronomical and the cosmic order. So I just wanted to conclude and just let you know that it's not necessary that you understand all this high-level mathematics. What's important is that the Fibonacci sequence essentially is the mathematics of living things, of nature, of proteins, of um, living structures, and that the more that we attune ourselves to our health and drinking pure waters and pure foods, we're realigning ourselves back to the harmonics of nature.